So I'm here in the Mammals Department of the Natural History Museum and we're going to be looking at narwhals today but I thought I would just show you the Grand Hall because it is spectacular, the amount of specimens you can actually see here and recreations. Now if we look down here we can actually see mammoth skulls with tusks. Now these are very interesting because in this episode we're going to be talking about how creatures have kind of led to many mythologies over time. And these myths are based on cyclops. So if you look at these mammoth skulls, when these were found hundreds and hundreds of years ago, it confused a lot of people digging them up because they saw these massive crevices in the skulls because they thought this must be an eye socket. So in their heads, these were the skulls of giants that had singular huge eyes, which we know in the stories of many myths to be cyclops. But in fact, this crevice is actually where the trunk would go. And we now know that today, but you can understand hundreds of years ago why they were so confused. So we're now gonna jump to a sequence creature known as a narwhal which led to many myths about unicorns because of their teeth or tusks. So let's go check them out and see what led to this theory. So I'm now stood next to a narwhal skull. Now this is of a male which is why we see this amazing tusk-like feature. Now these tusks are actually made out of, well I say made out of, they are actually teeth. So these are their canine teeth. So you can see in the skull here that there is another tooth there but only the left hand one typically grows and it grows in this spiral fashion you can see here, which is the basis for many, many myths and legends. Now this is because the Inuit tribes, so these are from the Arctic waters, would sell them on to naive Europeans who were exploring and traveling as unicorn horns. And that is why, if you look at any unicorn horn today, it has these spiral marks on. It's actually based upon narwhal tusks and that spiral form. So usually it's only one, but there are amazing examples where we see two of these tusks. So if I now come down to this amazing specimen, we can see that it actually has two of them. Both of this creature's canine teeth grew into these amazingly meter-long tusks. Now these can get up to three meters in length, and we don't actually know what they're used for. Evidence suggests that at the end of them, so we can see this like kind of shearing on the tusks, it suggests that they were used for fighting or spearing each other, but that's the thing, mainly each other, not prey. So they would use the tusks in a different fashion for prey. They would actually stun fish. So a bit like whales slap their tails on the water and the fish get stunned, narwhals would slap their tusks and then eat the fish whole. So the other theories behind these teeth or tusks, whatever you like to call them, is for attractiveness. They could, you know, show off to attract a mate, or they might even pierce through ice with them to make a gap through the channel. So there's lots of different theories on why they have them and what they're used for. But recent scientific studies have actually suggested that they were very important for sensory reasons. So when they're analyzed, they're covered in pores and internally they have nerve endings, which on a human, this would be an awful thing because it'd be so painful. But for narwhals they can use it to kind of distinguish between temperature changes, salinity differences and also depths. So it's really useful for them when they're traveling around the waters and trying not to get lost. So these teeth only grow in the males. So you can see here a female drawing which doesn't have a tusk or a tooth growing out the upper jaw. However, when we've analyzed their skulls, they still have these canine teeth. They just don't grow into these up to three meter long tusks. Now these obviously predominantly live in Arctic waters, but in 1949, they actually swam into British waters. Unfortunately, this was a fatal decision for them. It might have been because they were diseased or something like that, but they did once make it up the Thames and the female specimen has made it into the History Museum's collections, just not on display at the moment. So narwhals only have two teeth in their upper jaw and it is amazing that both of these teeth can become tusks like that amazing twin specimen we saw earlier. And in females, they don't even become tusks at all. So these are really interesting creatures um, that I wanted to share with you guys today and it's just one of the many curiosities that can be found here in the History Museum. But that's all we've got for you guys today in today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll be back with more next week. Thanks for watching. I'm